Hey guys, welcome to our first online video here. Um, so this is our week one video one and notes. This is our first lesson um, online for our digital kind of learning community here. Uh, you're, as we go through um, for each of the notes, you're gonna be able to find the notes if you go into um, the Microsoft Teams and you go into the files section. You'll just go to whatever week number it is and you'll be able to take the notes right off of there. So you've got an opportunity to either follow along with me and do your notes on normal lined paper or if you have a printer at home, you can always take my notes and print them out and fill them along with me as you go through. I'm also gonna post the final answers to these notes as well as a picture on that Microsoft Teams account. Um, and so that is up, like I said, at the top in the files section. Make sure you're looking in there because that's where everything's gonna be posted. So your notes will be posted there, your homework will be posted there, um, the links to these videos will be posted there, kind of everything's gonna live in that Microsoft Teams. So make sure you check that often. Um, as we go through and do some of these videos here, they're gonna be very similar to videos that we've done in the past. Um, kind of like our study guide videos and like our uh, major grade videos where I go through, I kind of explain everything, um, and then I give you guys a chance to do some practice problems as well. So we're gonna get started today on chapter 11, which is uh, 3D figures. So we're gonna talk a little bit about volume, um, some cross sections, and working with those 3D figures. Okay, so let's get ourselves started. So um, with 3D figures, there are a couple different types of figures that you're going to see. And you probably have seen a lot of these shapes before, whether in like another math class or kind of around your house, you'll see all these sort of different shapes. The first type is called a rectangular prism. A prism is something that looks like a box. The first word rectangle or rectangular this first word tells you um, what the shape of the base of the figure looks like. So if you look at this figure here, the base shape right down here at the bottom, this is a rectangle, right? Okay. And whatever the shape is of your base, it has one parallel right on the top. So the bottom and the top should be parallel when it's a prism. Okay, so a rectangular prism means the bottom is a rectangle and the top. So this right here is the name of your base. Okay, and so anytime you see a prism, whatever that first word is, is going to be the name of your base. The next one is a cylinder. So the base is a circle and the top is a circle. So it almost kind of looks like a can, right? Like a can of soup or something, that would be a cylinder. So the top and the bottom are circles. The next shape is a cone. The base of a cone is a circle, okay? And it comes up to one point at the top. So this literally looks like an ice cream cone, right? So you've got the base is a circle, comes up to one point. Um, another one you are probably familiar with is a cube. A cube means that the base and the top are both squares. It also means that the sides and the front and the back, all those lateral sides, those are all also squares in a cube, okay? Now, my next one down here at the bottom is the one that looks a little funky. It's called a triangular prism. So again, a prism means the top and the bottom are the same shape. The shape of ours is going to be a triangle. So there's a triangle at the bottom, there's a triangle at the top. There's my triangular prism, okay? Um, a lot of people get this mixed up because sometimes you might see a picture of a triangular prism on its side like that, right? Where the rectangles are at the bottom. But it's important to note that the parts that are parallel to each other are these triangles. So don't get fooled if I take a triangular prism and I push it off to the side, it's still going to be the base and the top are still parallel to each other, they're triangles. Now, the next ones look a little bit different because these ones are not prisms, these are called pyramids. And you can kind of think like the Egyptian pyramids, right? Everything comes up to a single point. So if you have something that's a pyramid, it comes up to a point. 
And the first one, the first word is still going to be what the name of my base is. So if you look at this picture here, the base is a square and all of my sides come up to one point at the top. So it's a pyramid. Same with the next one. If I go to the base of it, it's a triangle and it's a pyramid. So everything comes up to the top to one point. Okay, so anytime it comes to a point, it's a pyramid. If it's got tops and bottoms that are parallel, then it is a prism. The last one is a sphere, which I'm sure you've probably seen before. It kind of looks like a ball almost, right? It's just a circular kind of 3D object. Okay, so these are the 3D figures that we're gonna be looking at as we go into um, talking a little bit more about these different kind of shapes. Now, in this next part here, we are going to rotate some 2D figures in space. So two dimensional means something that is flat, right? So like this paper, flat is 2D. Something that's 3D, right, has three dimensions. It's something that you can pick up. It's something that you can hold, like a ball or a, you know, everything kind of that we're dealing with here in our world is 3D, but everything that's flat down to the surface is a 2D picture. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate a shape around a line. So if I take a rectangle, so I'm gonna zoom out here, here's my rectangle. If I take a rectangle and I rotate it very, 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 very quickly, you will notice as I'm rotating it, right, as it's going around and around and around, at the bottom, this line is almost making a circle at the bottom. Same with at the top, it's creating a circle at the top. So if I rotate a 2D rectangle fast enough, I'm gonna get a shape that's got a circle at the bottom and a circle at the top. Well, that shape would be a cylinder. So if I take my rectangle, here's the rectangle, right? And I rotate it around and around and around, I'm gonna get myself a cylinder. Okay, next one. If I take a triangle and I rotate my triangle around and around and around and around, okay, at the bottom I've got this straight line that goes all the way across. It's making a circle at the bottom, right? Circle at the bottom. But you will notice this point at the top stays there, right? It's not moving. Everything's coming to a point at the top. So because of that, this is making the shape that has a circle at the bottom and a point at the top. Well, it's got a circle at the bottom and a point at the top. That means it's making a cone. Okay, and so there's that triangle right there. Okay, last one is if I take a circle and I rotate a circle, which I bet you can probably guess what's gonna happen. If I take this circle and I go around and around and around and around and around nice and quickly, I'm making kind of a ball shape, and a ball shape is called a sphere. Okay, that was rotating 2D figures, okay? So rotate, rotate excuse me, means to turn or to spin, right? Now, I'm gonna take some 2D figures and I'm going to stack them. So stack means take one on top of the other, right? Stack them up. So if I stack some 2D figures, right? Imagine stacking some pancakes, right? We're making pancakes, we're feeling good, making ourselves a nice breakfast. If I stack enough pancakes, I can make a 2D, a flat picture, turn into a 3D one. So if I have a round pancake, right? And I take this round pancake and I stack pancakes that are congruent to the base. Congruent means same size and same shape, right? So everything's exactly the same. If I take a pancake that's a circle, right? Here's my circle and I stack another circle and another circle and another circle and another circle, right? I go all the way up. I'm creating a prism, right, with a circle at the bottom and a circle at the top. Well, which prism has a circle at the bottom and a circle at the top? That would be a cylinder. OK, 
Okay, now I've got myself a pancake, and this right here, this is a rectangle. Okay, so if I stack a rectangle on top of a rectangle on top of a rectangle, and so on and so forth. Again, that was not a good picture, but I'm making a prism with a rectangle at the bottom and a rectangle at the top. Well, if I come back up to the top, I say which one of these has a rectangle at the bottom and a rectangle at the top and it makes a prism, oh, that would be a rectangular prism. Okay, last one. If I have a triangle pancake and I stack a triangle on 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 a triangle, right? I've got a triangle at the bottom and I've got a triangle at the top and they've stacked their way all the way up. Well, this would be a prism again and the one that has a triangle at the bottom and a triangle at the top would be a triangular prism. So there's my answer for this one. I S M. Woo. Okay, I'm gonna try to spell it. There you go. Okay, so stacking 2D figures that are congruent, the exact same shape and size. Now, in this next part, we're going to name the 3D solid form by stacking pancakes that is similar to the base. Similar means they're getting slight, slightly smaller, right? So they're the same shape, but a different size. Same shape, but a different size. And that's really important, right? Because I'm getting smaller, 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 smaller. If I'm getting really, really small, I'm gonna come up to a point at the top. All right, so if I have a circle pancake and every circle pancake gets a little bit smaller, 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 until I get to the top, Right? That means I've got a circle at the bottom, but it comes up to a top point. Well, if I go back to my notes, I say, okay, which one's got a circle at the bottom, goes back up to a point at the top, that's a cone. So my answer here is cone. Okay, again, I've got a pancake here that is a rectangle. So if I take a rectangle, and they get smaller, 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 smaller. So here's my rectangle. It gets smaller, 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 till it's up at the top. I've got a rectangle at the bottom, but it's going all the way up to a smaller rectangle to a point. So I know it's gonna be some kind of pyramid, right? Well, then I say, which? what is the base shape of that pyramid, it's a rectangle. So it's not a square pyramid, it's a rectangular pyramid, right? Because that's the base of my picture, a rectangle. So it's a rectangular pyramid. So if it comes up to a point, it's a pyramid. Okay, last one, triangle pancake. If I take a triangle and then I stack them till they get smaller, 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 they're gonna come to a point. That means I've got a triangle at the bottom, but it comes all the way up to one point. Well, that would be a pyramid, and it would be a triangular pyramid because the base shape is a triangle. Okay, so if you have tops and bottoms that are the exact same shape and the exact same size, right, congruent stuff, congruent shapes, you're gonna be making a prism. If you've got shapes that are getting smaller because they are similar, you're gonna be making pyramids. And that's an important thing to note, to note the difference between those two. Now, for this next section here, cross sections, before you go on to this part, I want you to pause the video here and I want you to click on the link that's gonna be in the description. It's called a ninja video. So you're gonna watch that video before we get started on this section here, okay? You can look down in the description, like I said, or if you just wanna Google, or if you just wanna uh, search on YouTube, you can search 
cross section ninja video, it'll be the first thing that pops up. So take a moment, pause this video, watch that one, and then come back to this video. Okay, so hopefully you've watched that video now and you know that cross section is when you take a 3D shape and you cut through it to make a 2D shape, right? Cross section. So we're gonna name the cross sections formed with each cut. Now there's two different types of cuts that you can make. You can make a cut that is parallel to the base or perpendicular. Now parallel means exactly right, the same shape, right? Perpendicular means you're gonna be creating a 90 degree angle. Okay, that's important to note. So for my first picture here, I've got a cylinder. If I cut parallel to the base, here's the base, it's a circle. If I cut parallel, that's gonna give me something right in here, right? Parallel to the base. Well, it's gonna be the exact same shape as the base. The base is a circle, so mine is going to be a circle. Now, if I cut perpendicular, that means I'm making a 90 degree angle. So instead of going um, like left to right, I'm gonna to have to go up and down. If I cut up and down here, I'm gonna be making that shape right there, which is a rectangle. Okay, so notice when it was parallel, the base shape was the same. Notice that the perpendicular shape was different, okay? Now, in my next picture here, the base shape is a one, two, three, four, five, a six-sided figure, so that's a hexagon. So this is a hexagonal, and it's a prism, right? Because it doesn't come to a point. I've got a hexagon at the bottom, a hexagon at the top. Now, if I cut something parallel to the base, that means the same as the base, so I'm gonna end up making a hexagon. If I cut perpendicular, so I cut straight through, down, down over here, oh my gosh, look at that shape, it looks very similar to the one right above it, I'm gonna be making a rectangle. If I slice straight through it up and down, almost think of like if it was a, if this was a cake, and I slice the cake in half to try to cut myself a piece, it's gonna be giving me a rectangle shape, okay? Now, the next one, I've got a circle at the bottom and it comes up to a point. This looks like a party hat or an ice cream cone, right? So, this is a cone. If I cut parallel to the base, that means the same as the bottom, right? I'm gonna be getting something that looks like this, which, oh my gosh, is a circle. So notice when you're cutting parallel to the base, it happens to be the same shape, right, as the base. Same shape as the base. Now, if I cut this cone perpendicular or vertically, I'm gonna be cutting it here to here to here. Now this is not a rectangle, but I'm slicing this cone up and down, right? I'm slicing it up and down. So remember when we had our picture here, right? And this, this uh, shape, the triangle, made a cone, right? If I sliced it straight up down to the bottom, I would be making a triangle. Okay, so notice, because anyway, there's not four sides there anyway, like there wasn't over here for the rectangle. So if I'm slicing up and down, I'm making a triangle. Let's try the next one. If I look, this looks like a square at the bottom and it comes up to a point. So that must mean this is a square pyramid. Okay, if I cut it parallel to the base, I'm making a square, right? It's the same shape as my base. If I cut this pyramid, vertically. I'm making a 
triangle, right? I'm slicing it down through, so again, I'm making a triangle. Okay, last one. This shape here looks like a ball, so that must mean this is a sphere. Well, if I cut it parallel to the base, the base shape is a circle, so if I cut it parallel, whew, I've still got myself a circle. If I cut it vertically, well, it's still round, so I'm still gonna get myself a circle. So now let's go back and let's see kind of some patterns that we notice. Oops, where am I? Some patterns that we notice here with these cross sections. If you are cutting it parallel to the base, it's the exact same shape as the base, right? These should always match up if you're doing them parallel. The two what that when I cut them perpendicular, the two that gave me rectangles were both prisms, right? They were types of prisms. The two that gave me triangles were types of pyramids. They came up to one point. And then the sphere is kind of like my funky one that's all left by itself, right? Okay, so that's something to notice. All of the parallel ones stayed the exact same shape. If they were cut perpendicular and it was a type of prism, cylinder or a prism, then perpendicular gave me a rectangle. If it was cut perpendicular and it was some kind of pyramid shape or comes to a point like a cone does, then my perpendicular ones were triangles and then the sphere like I said is the one that's kind of all by itself right it's just the circle that I can rotate it left and right and get a sphere I could also rotate it up and down and get a sphere okay so at this point we are finished with our notes you can now go back into the Microsoft team file and you will see a piece of paper, or excuse me, a link to a PDF that says week one, video one, homework. And that week one, video one, homework looks just like this. There's some practice problems. There are five different problems. So what you're going to do is you're going to finish that homework. You can either, like I said, do it if you print, if you have a printer at home and you want to print this off and do it that way, that's fine. If you want to write it on lined paper, that is also okay. Um, either one of those is going to be fine, but what you're going to end up doing when you're finished is you're going to take two pictures of your work. One picture is going to be just of your work itself with your name on top in a marker. One picture is going to be you holding your work in front of your face so I know that it's your own work and you didn't try to take somebody else's work. You are going to submit those via a link in the Microsoft Teams. I'm also going to share that same link to our Edmodo page. So you'll have a plenty of different ways to get to it. Um, this homework is going to be due on Wednesday, right? So this was a Monday video. It's due on Wednesday by 9 a.m. It has to be turned in prior to 9 a.m. because at 9 a.m. it will close off and it will not allow you to go through and do any more. So please make sure that you turn it in before Wednesday at 9 a.m. You can turn it in anytime if you finish it right now, you do the video and you wanna turn it in right now, you know, in another 20 minutes when you finish, that's fine. But the latest you may turn it in, like I said, is Wednesday at 9 a.m., okay? So I hope that this video helped you guys out. Um, it's exciting that we did our first video together. Uh, and like I said before at the beginning of the video, I am going to take a picture of these notes that I just did. I'm going to post them in the Microsoft Teams so that you can follow along um, with my notes as well as you go through. Okay. All right. So have a great day, my gems, and get yourself ready for our second activity.